。你知道今年有大规模珊瑚白化的情形吗？什么？我今年才学会潜水，还来不及看台湾美丽的珊瑚，今年就爆发了大规模的珊瑚白化事件。话说，珊瑚白化到底是什么？它对海洋生态有什么冲击？跟我们的关系又是什么呢？关于珊瑚的小知识，会在这集通通告诉你。我们邀请到了重量级的神秘嘉宾，记得看到最后哦。台湾四面环海，拥有丰富的海洋资源，特别是在垦丁、蓝屿、绿岛、小琉球，都有丰富的珊瑚生态，而且水质清晰的程度也让它成为世界级的潜点，有许多外国人都会慕名而来。大家知道，全世界的石珊瑚有七百多种，在台湾的石珊瑚就占了将近三分之一，是非常惊人的量。今年珊瑚白化的情形特别严重。如果这个现象一直没有好转的话，接下来我们可能会看到三大冲击：第一，天然消波块消失，海岸线受到冲击；第二，有将近一千五百多种的鱼类会随着珊瑚死去而消失；第三，全球有将近五亿的人生计会受到影响。这是因为珊瑚是许多人赖以生存的重要资源。哇，听完这些冲击，是不是觉得资讯量非常庞大呢？让我们欢迎来自中研院生物多样性中心的 Aziz。Welcome, Aziz. Hi. So first of all, please tell us about yourself. Okay, so my name is Aziz, and I'm a PhD researcher at Academia Sinica, and I study marine ecology. I focus on coral reefs and their dispersal mechanisms, mechanisms、uh, throughout Southeast Asia. Why coral reef? Like, how did you start this research topic? So when I was very young,、um, I was interested, always interested in the ocean,、um, and I had a good opportunity to visit a coral reef in Egypt, and I was just inspired diving、uh, in Egypt, and I was inspired by what we can find under the ocean.、Um, it's really amazing,、um, and Taiwan is a great place、um, for diving、uh, to study marine ecology.、Um, the coral reefs here are amazing, and we have、uh, a lot of islands, a lot of places we can go,、uh, which are all different in their own. What's special about Taiwanese coral? So Taiwanese corals, they're regulated by the typhoon,、uh, which is unique、um, uh, to certain places in the world. And Taiwan is、um, a great place to study this.、Um, and we can see the、uh, the effects of a natural system uh, working um, on on the reef itself. Um, and these type of things you don't get in other areas of the world, which are usually more stable.、Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that Taiwanese corals survive typhoons every year、um, is incredible and very interesting、yeah. to us as scientists.、Yeah. When you first got to Taiwan, like, what's your first culture shock?、Uh, heat. <laughs> heat was definitely one. The humidity is definitely one.、Um, obviously,、uh, food is extremely different here.、Um, lifestyle is a little bit different, but you know, Taiwanese people are extremely friendly,、um, so it's relatively easy to live here,、um, yeah. to settle down. You can make a lot of friends very fast. Yeah, we are friendly people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> most. <laughs> so, speaking of heat,、yeah. it brings us to the topic of today. Yeah. So we know this year it's been very, very, very hot.、Mm-hmm. Like in July, we experienced the、uh, extreme、uh, hot weather, thirty-seven point nine degree in、yeah. Taipei, its highest record.、Mm-hmm. So same happened in the ocean, right? Like, yeah. This year, what happened underwater? The temperature increase. Substantially, and it went over the threshold of where coral reefs, especially, can survive.、Mm. Um, and this is、uh, alarming for us, as quite a small island with a lot of coral.、Um, this is、uh, a worrying situation, which happened、um, over the summer. Yeah. This October, Greenpeace is going to launch a mini project to monitor how fast. The coral can recover from bleaching, and we invite people, the diver, to use this chart to record how healthy the situation the coral 
Maybe Aziz can explain a bit why there are four lines for different colors on the board and how can people make use of this tool. Mm -hmm. So we spoke about the algae in the coral and this algae is special because it provides the coral with its unique color. And for each uh, coral species and actually within the species itself, some corals can be different colors. So it can range from a nice uh, deep brown uh, to a lighter brown to a kind of greeny color. Yeah. And also we find ones that are kind of purple and pink too as well. Um, so when you're in the water uh, we can see that most corals are either white or whitish um, and then we can determine which one they actually are and this not all of them will turn super white uh, but most of them will have a pale look um, around this area um, to them and this is, is really useful information. I think and one of the best things you can yeah. do though is take pictures. Yeah. Like take pictures of the coral uh, and share your pictures, most definitely share them and, and um, re we need to recognize that bleaching has occurred in, in Taiwan um, and all these pictures are incredibly useful uh, for scientists and, yeah. for, and for the public too. Yeah. We see the white coral and people say, oh it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. but what exactly is happening? Yeah, you know, um, a lot of people that we know, we've showed these pictures to, and the first the reaction is, it's beautiful. And it is definitely beautiful, but for scientists, it's alarming. It's not so beautiful, actually. Um, and what has actually happened, we, we talked about the coral polyp. The coral polyp is really the thing which powers uh, the coral, which has this algae inside its tissue. It can give it energy, it can hunt, it can, and it survives. Yeah, mm. it's great. And also the algae gives the coral its unique color. Yeah. yeah. And so we see a nice healthy coral reef. When the temperature increases over a certain amount, over around 30 degrees, this algae can no longer do its job. And the coral recognizes this and says, well, if you're not doing your job, I'm not gonna provide a home for you anymore. And therefore the algae leaves the coral and what's left behind is this white skeleton. It's not dead. It's definitely not dead, but it's, to put it into our perspective, it's kind of in intensive care. Um, it's going through a period of its suffering um, and then a period of recovery, hopefully recovery as well. So it, the polyp is really the, the most important part of the, the coral which holds this algae. Now can the coral get the algae back? Yes, it can get the algae back, but it needs the temperature to decrease so the algae can then do their job again and, and this mutual beneficial relationship, yeah, yeah, they will come back hopefully, yeah, they can recover. But yeah. I have a question, so is it the algae or the coral that's sensitive to the temperature? It's the algae that is sensitive to the temperature. But we have to remember that algae is a, a, an integral part of the coral itself. So corals are sensitive to temperature change. And if we think about our own bodies, um, our own temperature, we are very sensitive to temperature changes. Yeah. At the moment, everywhere we go, we check our temperature because this is a sign of a stress response. Bleaching is a stress response. The corals are telling us that they are suffering. And the reason they are suffering is because of the increased temperature. Taiwan lies on the outside of the coral triangle, just uh, on the edge. Outside. Just on the outside, okay. yeah. So it's an important stepping stone for higher latitude countries such as Japan. Mm. So when a coral reproduces, it can use Taiwan either to settle or to swim past up uh, through the currents up to higher latitudes. So Taiwan is definitely um, an important part of this whole system uh, that um, in Southeast Asia. Okay, yeah. so that's why it's a stepping stone for mm -hmm. coral to travel from yeah, yeah. south to north. Yeah, for north. sure. And our populations in Taiwan help feed populations in the north as well as um, in parts of Japan and South oh, Korea. It too. affects all the region. Yeah, you know, all this system is connected in some way and that's the kind of beauty of it mm. so you know protecting one system is not necessarily protecting another we need a real uh, kind of collaborative effort to to protect this whole system exactly so if you're interested in marine environment and if you love the ocean uh, please subscribe and share this video right down here perfect yeah <laughs> so this year we see pretty damaging mm -hmm. coral bleaching yeah. here in Taiwan but also around the region, right? Yeah. So maybe you can talk about what happened this summer. Okay, so I think, yeah, before we talk about what happened, I think it's important, as you said, to understand what, what a coral actually is. 
A coral on its own is relatively a simple structure. It's a calcium carbonate skeleton um, and it can come in many shapes and many sizes. They can grow very big or stay very small. Some are like a dome shape, some are like a tree um, and uh, this is their morphology. Do you know that coral is an animal? Most people don't know that fact. Yeah, it's not a plant, it's not a rock, it's an animal, 100%. Yeah. It's definitely alive. But these polyps on the coral, they can form thousands upon millions on one single animal, and they are all identical. And they all work together for the same thing, mm. to provide energy for the coral. But the polyp itself isn't enough. It needs teamwork, it needs some, it needs some help. So it attracts algae, microscopic algae, which we find in the ocean all over. And these algae are very special. They can photosynthesize, mm -hmm. so they can get energy from the sun. And the they algae... Are the plant. Not really... Plant. Yeah, they are a plant. Are they plant? Yeah, they are a plant, yeah. Okay. So the algae is like the plant. Also on land we have plants that do photosynthesis yeah. to produce energy for coral. Yeah, so the algae live inside the tissue of, of the coral itself and they provide energy and food for the coral and in return, the coral provides the algae a home. So this is a symbiotic mm -hmm. relationship that they have. Um, there's only 0.1% of corals uh, that cover the sea floor, oh, but okay. they provide around, uh, for around 25% of all marine life. So these uh, very, very small structures are extremely valuable uh, to an array of marine species, which include fish, um, all the way up to sharks. Yeah. So now we know what is a coral mm -hmm. and why is it important to the marine ecosystem. But maybe you can elaborate a bit more, like why it matter to us, to people, and like what does it impact? Yeah, I think this is a really important point. You know, what makes corals human? Uh, what makes it relatable to us? Um, corals are directly affecting our economy every single day. But these uh, directly affect the local economy as well as the national and international global economy. Um, they provide billions, uh, quarries provide billions of US dollars uh, to the economy as well as millions of jobs. In the US alone, 1.5 million jobs directly rely on coral reefs. What rates. kind of job would that be? So these are fishermen jobs, they're also coastal protection uh, jobs, management, resource management jobs. All of these rely on a healthy coral reef, uh, for sure. Um, within Taiwan itself, there are um, hundreds of diving shops um, that rely on coral reefs to attract tourists uh, yeah. from all around the world. And we have several islands where their main uh, form of income is, is tourism. Uh, so this is incredibly an incredibly important resource yeah. for the economy. And some experts say that without corals, um, then our economy could reduce by 10% uh, because less people are going around to these places, especially in the Great Barrier Reef, um, where they provide and added protection to the land, you know, these, these things are, are so valuable and we really take them for, for granted. We actually have a barrier reef in Taiwan as well, in Kunting. Kunting is a barrier yeah. reef. Yeah. And so this forms a, a protection for uh, Nanwan Bay, I think it's called, um, in, in Taiwan. So this, these reefs are, are not only um, useful in terms of tourism, but they are practically yeah. a kind of engineering miracle. Maybe you can uh, elaborate a bit, like how much percentage mm -hmm. of coral has been affected by the warm temperature this year? Okay, so in ta in Taiwan, um, you know, there's a lot of numbers been put out there, but we estimate between 50 and 70 percent of corals have been affected. This doesn't mean the mortality will be 50 to 80 percent, but we are looking at a above average mortality for yeah. for sure. Yeah, not every coral will be able to recover. So around 50 to 70 percent mm -hmm. that they are bleached? Yeah, they are bleached, they are yeah. probably still alive. Yes, right? yes. They are most definitely still alive. When we go and check, we can still see the tissue on the coral. Uh, they're still surviving. They are going through a process. Um, and if we put it into terms we can understand, we can imagine the coral has coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, it has a virus and um, it's trying to recover from this. Its, its body is battling, you know, this virus. and. There's actually nothing we can do to, to help this at this stage. We are already too late. 
you know, if we talk about a forest fire, we're able to put the fire out with water. Um, for corals, you know, this is the result of a forest fire. The forest fire has already occurred within the water. Um, so all we have to do now is kind of hope that corals can recover as, as much as possible. Hope is the only thing we can Yes, because we are already too late. When it comes to the marine environment, we need to address the problems way before they happen. Um, when, but when it comes to coral bleaching, we need to be addressing the large companies, uh, governments, uh, to declare climate emergencies, for example. Um, uh, these are really important times uh, for the climate. It's a really important time for our health, personally, as humans, uh, but for the coral, they've been experiencing this for the past 30 years. Yeah. So what can we do to address this? Well, um, as much effort as we did um, as coronavirus into the environment, we would make significant progress, definitely. Exactly. We need to understand that these systems are directly related to our health as well and our well-being too. Because and the, we see like how the government and the people respond so fast to the virus. 100%, but yeah. Not to the climate change, which is also a global risk. 100%. And just because coronavirus is here doesn't mean that the climate crisis is, has gone away, for sure. After the pandemic, we will still be left with degraded environments. We'll, be, we'll still be left with things Things to do associated with the climate yeah. and you're right yeah Taiwan has been amazing in its response to coronavirus and if it put if the government put that much effort into the environment uh, we would see significant progress yeah and people from different areas like the academic and uh, Greenpeace yeah have we work yeah. together <laughs> 100% yeah because it's not just it doesn't rely on the scientists alone it doesn't yeah. rely on the media alone and it doesn't rely on a, a, an organization like yeah. Greenpeace just thank you again for being here with with us today and we are looking forward to seeing you again in the future maybe when you come back mm -hmm. to share the results from the reproduction uh, monitoring mm -hmm. yeah yeah great thank you very much 聽完這集相信大家對於珊瑚了解又更近了一步也不知道大家的英文聽力是不是也近了一步呢如果喜歡今天的內容的話趕快按下訂閱並且分享給更多人看到 Green Voice 環保知識加為您解答氣候變遷跟環境保護各式各樣的議題還有新聞及時分享 Green Voice 我們下週六見囉拜拜